Pasito tum tum, pasito tum tum, pasito tum tum. Pasito tum tum, pasito tum tum. In the last decades, serial killers have had the attention of our most darkest fantasies for various reasons. People want to know what makes someone go along with an act that has severe consequences. How does the mind get desensitized from human life? The brutal murders adds more to the shock value, and if the killer has odd hobbies, they become a media sensation. Movies like Natural Born Killer comment on the glorification the media portrays on killers, which could possibly inspire a copycat for the same attention. The Scream franchise satires our fascination of serial killers to the point they get immortalized through film. It doesn't necessarily glorify killers, but it comments on how we as a society glorify them. And in our fascination, scary movies have come along inspired by serial killers, but none have had a bigger impact to the horror franchise than Ed King, inspiring classics like Psycho, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Silence of the Lamb. It's unfortunate that whenever something heinous is done, art has to come out of it. Even though Ed Gein didn't have a big number of kills, the way he did it was so horrifying that his influence in horror films was very obvious. Yes, two women were butchered, but <sighs> at least it gave us a great film. Uh, at least it gave us one of the great villains of all time. Ooh, I'm saying this with a grain of salt. So I'm here to shamefully look at how did Ed Gein inspired Norman Bates, Leatherface, Hannibal Lecter, biographical and documentaries of him, and quite possibly the slasher horror of the 70s and 80s. And fair warning because this will have SPOILER A LOT! On November 16, 1957, Ed Gein was arrested for the murder of two women. He was known as the Plainfield Ghoul after they found dismembered bodies at his home in such a gruesome manner. Later, a book by the name of Psycho was written in 1959, based on Ed Gein's crimes. Then a year later, the book was adapted into a low-budget movie directed by Alfred Hitchcock about Norman Bates' obsession with his mother, causing him to murder women. Psycho also had a similar touch with Les Diaboliques with the bathtub scene. The film was a box office success, but it got mixed reviews for defying the censorship code at that time. It was taboo to show a woman half-naked, let alone opening up with infidelity. It introduced such topics as cross-dressing and transvestites. Why was he dressed like that? He's a transvestite. As well as showed the first ever flushing toilet scene in a film. <laughs> Can you believe it? All the trouble just for a toilet? Psycho would initiate the general trope of what a killer's motives were through Norman Bates. They were loners. Did you go out with friends? Well, a, a boy's best friend is his mother. They had parental issues. When she talks to me like that, I feel I'd like to go up there and curse her and, and, and leave her forever. And they were sexually frustrated. When he met your sister, he was touched by her, aroused by her, he wanted her. Similar to How Maniac, another film inspired by Ed Gein has a loner who had parental issues. Frank, mommy has to punish you. and violently takes his frustrations on women. Today we know that killers don't need to have to go through these events. They can be well ordinary people and still make these atrocities. Ed Gein's motives did not have sexual tendencies, but the big similarity between him and Norman were their toxic relationship with their mothers. The Psycho book would even compare Norman Bates' crimes with Ed Gein's. Both had a dominant mother who prevented them from having friends or any social connections. Ed Gein's mother was a religious fanatic who demonized women as sluts, except for herself, of course. His mother was a clinging, demanding woman. This made Ed socially incompetent. Similar to Norman, his mother was the same jealous nut, as they both abused their sons to keep them under control from having any friends or any love affairs. Mother, she's just a stranger. She's hungry and it's raining out. Mother, she's just a stranger. As if men don't desire strangers. But despite all of their abuse, both Ed and Norman were loyal to their mothers even after their deaths. They both stole their corpses and dressed up as their mothers to keep her memory alive. But they took a much twisted direction. Whenever they had lustful desires, they killed women because they believed that's what their dominant mother would have done. In the end, Ed Gein was labeled insane, just as Norman Bates due to their early years of abuse, loneliness, 
and dependence from their abusive mothers. Psycho would go on as a game changer for films, from how a twist is done, how to play with our expectations, and was credited for introducing the horror slasher killer with knives such as Michael Myers, Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Leatherface, and many more. But the story of Edkin doesn't end here, as it would get much more disturbing. The film which you are about to see is an account of the tragedy which befell a group of five youths. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was marketed as a real-life story, when in fact it is the most fabricated from this video. What happened was true. There were no teenagers butchered by a family of cannibals in Texas. The film came out of post-Vietnam and Watergate. The opening was an intentional deceit reflecting the deception of the US leaders from the early 70s. It has settled political statements about capitalism, animal cruelty, just from the way the teenagers are slaughtered like farm animals. The horror comes from the cannibalistic family, embodied by their deformed mascot Leatherface. He's not the smartest, if anything, he's the most animalistic of the slasher killers, but his larger-than-life presence makes him a force to be reckoned with. In a way, Leatherface and Norman are similar from being outcast, from being dependent of a maniacal family, specifically sending Leatherface to live a brutal life of cannibalism. And while sexual drives are not a motive for him, it can still play to his social exile. As much as all the characters are fictional, the methods in the film used to dismember the victims are not far from Ed Gein's methods. Not only did Ed Gein steal his mother's body, but he would steal recent dead bodies from grapes for his macabre inventions. If I recommend, go and google this. After his arrest, they found at his home skulls in his bedpost, four noses, decapitated heads, chairs covered in human skin, a lamp covered in human skin, more human bones, a belt made out of female nipples, and masks made out of human skin. This was the inspiration for Leatherface's mask covered in human skin. Early that year, a biographical depiction of Ed Gein was released before Chainsaw Massacre, and it set the stage for the macabre that Chainsaw would showcase. I wouldn't be surprised if Chainsaw borrowed from the deranged film, especially from the dinner scene. The inside look of the house was an imitation of Ed Gein's macabre inventions and human leftovers. Back then, it was one of the most horrifying discoveries they found inside a killer's house. The place in the film is disturbing, Yet, there is something hypnotic about the house that it looks artistic in a twisted way. They don't show much gore or blood, but the violence and imagery is too graphic that we think we're actually seeing too much gore and blood. The low-budget look gives it a more realistic exploitation film. I gotta say, I have a ball watching this film. It is so disturbing and unsettling. It always keeps you at the edge of your seat, but it is not something I would get sick on my stomach. It's one of those exploitation films I can watch over and over, maybe because it's not as graphic as some might see it. Still, this pushed the envelope for how far they could go with the violence. Texas Chainsaw Massacre plays with our most elemental fears of death, our fears of mutilation, torture, and lasting long enough to see our lives slowly fade away in the most agonizing manner. I just hope the following one is not as graphic as the others. Or is it? If you haven't seen Silence of the Lamb, I got a confession to make. I lied about Hannibal Lecter being related to Ed Gein. In fact, he was based off from another killer, Alfredo Trevino. If anything, he's closer resembling Leatherface for their cannibalism. But while Leatherface is a dumb brute, Hannibal is smart and cultured. He's a psychiatrist and doesn't feel much to be a threat. Mostly for how he has no intentions of harming aging Clarice. Eventually, he becomes like her therapist, healing her inner struggles while also helping her catch another killer. Maybe he is similar to Ed Gein based on how they dismember their victims. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. He much rather eat people who are rude instead of preying on the innocent. Outside of that, there isn't much that they have in common. He can be considered an outcast like Norman Bates, but he's not the Norman Bates killer type with parental issues or sexual tendencies. So, why did I play Silence of the Lamb in this topic? Well, as I mentioned, there is another killer who's the main villain, Buffalo Bill, a disturbed transsexual murderer. It places the lotion in the basket. 
before I saw the film, I never heard much about Buffalo Bill. The word of mouth was focused a lot more on Hannibal, when in the film the focus was more on who was Buffalo Bill. It's one of those occasions when a performance overshadows the other. In fact, this is the role that granted Anthony Hopkins an Oscar. But I don't think there was much recognition at that time for the Buffalo Bill character. Which explains how good Anthony's performance was, or how uncomfortable it was to showcase a transsexualized bile. Homosexual characters were portrayed very one-dimensional in the HIV pandemic during the 80s. This film came out in 1991, so they were still coming out of this pandemic. LGBTQ characters were either perverts, jokes, or monsters. Buffalo and Hannibal are made-up characters, yet Buffalo fits the Norman Bates characteristics of a loner with parental issues. Our belly wasn't born a criminal, Clarice. He was made one through years of systematic abuse. And his sexual frustrations are linked to his transsexual tendencies, as he creates a female suit out of women's skins. This one likes to skin his humps. Similar to how Ed Gein made a female skin suit out of his victims to resemble his mother. He would wear it and presumably dance with it at night. Psycho first mentioned Ed Gein's cross-dressing, but not too graphic for the sensibilities in that time. Chainsaw Massacre tested the limits of how far they could go with the graphic violence. Killers using female skins was already established in films like Deranged and Maniac, notably using female scabs to decorate mannequins. And by the 90s, we at least had a tougher stomach to digest the macabre. The three main monsters resembled Ed Gein in some ways, some more than others. Norman Bates embodies the obsessive mama boy side of Ed Gein, as he was the closest to represent his origins. Leatherface embodies the macabre human inventions of Ed. Buffalo Bill seems to try to embody Ed Gein's sexuality for the female skin cross-dressing. But as I mentioned before, Ed had no interest for sexual intimacy. He was so devout to his mother that he was willing to die a virgin. Transsexuality had nothing to do with Ed. It was how cross-dressers were perceived as either perverts or psycho killers. Silence of the Lamb was meant to be more of a crime suspense, but regardless, it became part of the scary movie franchise. The film could be described as a sophisticated horror for the Oscar contenders, and it gave us one heck of a performance by Judy Foster and Anthony Hopkins. The crimes of Ed Gein might still dominate our pop culture craving for mass killer monsters, and that's the way it is. If you commit a heinous crime, art will find a way to keep their memory alive through music, movies, and other forms of art. In the end, it's like what a crazy nut once said. We all go a little mad sometimes. Haven't you? In a time when crossovers are a no-brainer, especially for horror films since they've done it for so long, we've already had Frankenstein vs. The Wolfman, Freddy vs. Jason, Alien vs. Predator, and yet we still haven't had a crossover between these three flesh-eating, loving-wearing buggers yet? I would pay to see a crossover between Norman Bates vs. Leatherface vs. Hannibal Lecter, and the winner will get a fancy furry coat. Probably out of some redneck they sew. So what do you think about these movies? Do you like them? Do you not like them? What is your favorite film based out of a serial killer? Leave your thoughts on the comment section down below. And if you like this video, leave a like and subscribe for more content. Well guys, tune in next time because when I get back, I'll be talking about West Side Story. Just by itself, no comparison. So for now, that's it for today. <gasps> Ciao. Pasito tum tum, pasito tum tum, pasito tum.